the bench is a piece that I have in my collection of old electrical instruments. This is a 50 hertz tuning fork used as a 50 hertz frequency standard back in the day made by the H. Tinsley Company of London and th this company is still actually in operation today was founded in 1904 and this unit was something that I picked up at one of our local electronics stores from years ago, which unfortunately the store no longer exists, Robbie's at Queenstown. When I bought it, the glass here on the top was cracked and I did up the unit, got rid of some of the scratching off it and I replaced the glass. Recently I had a little bit of an accident, a, a book fell on on this glass and and cracked it once again so today i'm just starting to do a minor restoration of this unit and i thought while i'm doing that i might show you uh, the really beautiful manufacturing uh, that uh, was done for this for this unit so first up i'll just uh, uh, I've, I've already uh, started to remove uh, the screws and I'm just going to take off these bits of beading that hold the glass in place and we'll just get them out of the way and then what I'll do is just use a scalpel to lift this glass out the broken pieces and put them to one side so now I'll give you a bit better look at the tuning fork and how it operates. All right, here we have the tuning fork itself. And we have a locking mechanism here that actually allows you to set the tuning fork in motion like this. And you can hear that is now buzzing. But what will happen is, at the moment, it will just slowly die away. It's got a quite a high mechanical cue for the fork. And you can still hear it, but it's slowly dying away. What they did was to include an electromagnet here. When power is applied to the coil through this switch, the coil is then energized. Once you actually get some motion of the fork, this switch interrupts that current flowing through the coil. And like an electric bell, which has a clapper that hit, when it hits the bell, the contact here opens so that the field collapses and the clapper moves back. This, in a similar way, excites the fork. So, what we'll do next is put some power under this and show you it operating. I'll note, too, that there's a second contact down here, and that's used so that you can actually get an output from this, and it'll generate a square wave at 50 hertz. But now over the side here you can see we've got a couple of wires joined up and this only requires 1.5 volts just basically a 1.5 volt battery it needs about 100 milliamps or so to operate but now if i flick this this will start and it will just keep on operating now the fork will not die away and in fact I can try and slow that down a bit and it will come back so the DC voltage driving that will now maintain the fork operation now we've got this set up as you can see well it's about 1.55 volts 
that's actually driving it. Fairly noisy looking on here. What we've done is we've got a 2K2 resistor connected from the power here to this fork contact output which is this contact here and uh, let's just uh, flip the the fork and start it and as you can see we've got a square wave now is it, it because part of the time this is open circuit it gets quite noisy so we can put a capacitor across here to clean that up and you're still getting quite a few impulses here due to the actual switching the arcing in the switching and I'm not going to worry about that at the moment um, but this was how it was designed to work and the frequency won't actually show quite uh, well enough here because of these extra pulses that are, are tricking the the uh, frequency counter in the unit and they'll trick virtually any frequency counter so there's no real point in using some other counter to make the measurement we can put a, another capacitor in circuit and I just might do that and we can hook onto here and hook this just wind this capacitor around here and then hopefully you can make a connection there and it cleans it up a bit you've still got these quite large spikes and in fact the frequency counter is still giving us a a bad reading however this is on five milliseconds and we've got one two three four divisions so we're 20 milliseconds and that is 50 hertz interestingly you've got these adjustments here and here to set the contact up and particularly this one just interesting this will give you a pulse width adjustment if you like it, it adjusts the duty cycle of the, the pulse so I can actually reduce that and we've still got a 50 Hertz but we've only got a, about a 25% duty cycle I can just reduce it a bit more and it really gets to a point where it's not not triggering very well but I can then increase that again and it'll go the other way so you can use this to to make a duty cycle adjustment to the the outputted square wave so I'll just re-trigger that reposition the trigger and there we go here you have quite a reasonably accurate frequency source for the time it's according to the Tinsley website the first time they produced these was in about 1930 I don't know how old this one is I'm guessing that it would be from the 1930s or the 1940s but probably not much older than that because by that time electronic oscillators would have been more widely available you can see here on the ends of the fork these weights and these additional weights here that can be adjusted so you can actually fine tune the operating frequency of the fork um, to, to give you as precisely as possible given a, it being a mechanical system but there's quite precise adjustment of the frequency available I, I think overall you can see the, the quality and craftsmanship that's gone into this this device 
at the time this would have been a laboratory grade reference standard of frequency possibly for the standard section of an electrical power authority or similar these days we have atomic frequency standards cesium or rubidium reference standards but back in the day this would have been quite a good standard for 50 hertz.